Well, tonight's been a hell of a night. Welcome to Astro's Playroom. We're going to do this. We're going to finish it. This was fun when I played it last time. And uh, maybe one of the best pack-in games of all time. And tech demos as well. So we're going to do this. If you're wondering where Final Fantasy 16 is, I'm probably going to do that tomorrow night. And if you're wondering where the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom finale is, I don't I don't know when. I can't do early Zelda tomorrow, I don't think. Uh can I No, I can't. I can't. SSD Speedway. I haven't done this one right. Someone said, can we just skip Final Fantasy 16? I mean, you could. I'm enjoying it. It's a good. It's a good game. Um, this is the PS2 themed area. Well, I say themed. It's not like, you know, overtly PS2, but um, you unlock PS2s. And PS2 accessories. Ho oh, oh. ho. Whoa, whoa. Let me just use Ascend real quick to get up here. Um, I don't know what game this is supposed to be. Gravity Rush? Oh, okay. Gyro. I can't believe the robot is dead. So yeah, chat. Gex. Gex is going to be happening. I feel like there were more... Oh, the Wonka trailer. I wanted to mention the Wonka trailer, because... Timothy Chalamet has been getting, like, trashed because of his, um, his performance. And, uh, yeah, it's not good. But, uh, okay. I, I listen, I like Timothy Chalamet in Dune quite a bit. I've seen him in a couple other things. He's good in Interstellar. Um, that's all I really, maybe like one other thing, maybe? But it is so... He's doing, like, the Johnny Depp Wonka. Not really, but he's kind of, like, channeling, like, some of that energy, which is, please stop. God, please stop. But, yeah, I mean, the movie is not going to be anything more than a farcical attempt to recapture the magic of the, of the first movie. Oh, look at that. Well, that's a pretty intense reference. That can only be one thing. Clud Sword. The Proud Clod. Hell yeah, look at the textures on that thing. It's nice. He is 100% doing Gene Wilder, but failing at it. Oh, okay. I mean, if that was... I can see what you mean, but I, I feel like what he's... I feel like what he's doing ends up looking more like the Johnny Depp Wonka. 
someone said his inability to like be whimsical or like what was it I don't know like there's something like somewhat deranged about Willy Wonka like the movie's kind of dark there's moments of, of the uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie that's a little dark and that's what made me love it and still holds up as an adult mostly but um, yeah, this it's unfortunate because Timothy Chalamet has Dune coming out and then uh, Willy Wonka not long after that. And to say that those are completely different characters would be an understatement. But I mean, that's good. You want to show your range as an actor in this in the business, right? But I don't know if he was the best choice for that role. I don't I don't know why they chose Timmy. Not that I'm some kind of expert, but man, that's that was a rough trailer. The Dune trailer, on the other hand, looks awesome. How's oh, is that Pyramid Head? The chocolate must flow. <laughs> Um, I watched Asteroid City. Is that the name of it? And, uh... I don't know how I feel about it, because I, I started really disliking it. Because I'm just like, alright, I think I'm over the Wes Anderson thing. Like, I'm really just getting sick of this style. But then the movie became kind of David Lynchy, and I noticed that I got really into it. And I started thinking to myself, okay, like, I agree that the Wes Anderson thing is becoming pretty predictable, but it's a style, at least it's something. And, I, and he was doing some different things in this movie. The cast was great. It's a really fucking weird movie, and there's a couple scenes that really stuck with me. But I have to be honest, if there's subtext in that movie, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of it, I need to watch it like two more times to get it. Because it, it went totally over my head. Killzone reference. There's more subtext than text. It seems like maybe, uh... <laughs> You're onto something there, but I liked it. By the end of it, I liked it. And it got real creepy and like real weird and like it broke several fourth walls in, a, in, a, in an interesting way, in a surprisingly interesting way. That's a good controller. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, uh, so, no, I, I need to watch it again, so I don't really fully know how I feel about it. I still think Darjeeling Limited is my favorite Wes Anderson, because it is generally pretty grounded compared to his later stuff. And I like the music and, and India portrayed in the movie. It's just great. But, um, this one I like way better than French Dispatch, not as much as Grand Budapest. It might end up being one of my favorite Wes Andersons if I watch it, like, two or three more times. But I don't know if I'm going to do that. And I have to really try to figure out what he's trying to say with it. But I appreciate how weird it is. And there's a really good alien in the movie. I don't... That's not a spoiler. But it's a it really, really good alien. Someone said, Vinny, do you have any big plans for Halloween? Um, Dead Space Remake. Amnesia, the new one. Oops. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. And, uh, whatever random horror stuff. I already have a collection of some horror stuff, for sure. But, it's kind of just, um, as it comes in, I make note of it, and then we do horror stuff. But those are the main ones, yeah, those those are the two main ones. 
And if we have time for anything else, I will consider doing other things too. So, chat. Can you hear it? The haptics? All grimace all month. <laughs> World of Horror gets a 1.0 release. It's a safe bet we'll do World of Horror every Halloween. So it's, it'll be nice to have new um, content. Also, there's a physical release for World of Horror that looks pretty nice. I'm very, um, very big fan of World of Horror. Vib ribbon? Is that is that a vib ribbon ribbon reference? No shit. It's amazing how many of the games I don't get the references to, like the big games. And then you show me a vib ribbon reference, and I'm like, that's the best thing ever. I'm like, is that God of War? Who, which guy is that? Kratos? It's Kremrold. Turns out it was Kremrold the whole time. Tap for PS2. I didn't have one of these. I forgot to mention my PS2 library last time I played this, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now because I can see them. All right, here's my PS2 library. Dirge of Cerberus. This is in no particular order. Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> Time Splitters, one. Champions of Norath, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 1, Soul Calibur 3, Guitar Hero, Burnout 3, Takedowns, that game is fucking sick. Sly Cooper, first one. Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, Dark Cloud 2, which by the way, one of the best, most underrated games, I think. GTA 3, of course, Castlevania Lament of Innocence, Final Fantasy X, Jam Pack, uh, Twisted Metal Black, Devil May Cry 3, and Rogue Galaxy, which I've never played, but I have it. I've played other PS2 games since these games um, emulated, of course. And I did uh, have a couple other games that I sold. I don't remember what they were. Which jam pack is it? I have... Um, uh... Jam Pack Volume 13 with Shadow of the Colossus, Sly 3, Jack X Combat Racing, Ratchet Deadlock, Soul Calibur 3, Burnout Revenge, Chronicles of Narnia, Genji, Dawn of the Samurai, Giant Enemy Crab, Castlevania Curse of Darkness, Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood. So, anyway. Sorry for the gaming interruption. I just forgot to mention that last time and I wanted to. Like, I played Curse of Darkness emulated, and I played, um, you know, uh, Vice City was my broken game, unfortunately. It didn't... It didn't quite work. And The Sims I had for it as well, and that also did not work. I was... broken. But, yeah, Dark Cloud 2 is... If it wasn't such a long game, I would consider doing another stream of it. But that game is long, and... As much as I love it, it is grindy. But it, it is maybe one of my favorite games. Like, it's it's in my top 100. I don't know where I put it on my list when I made my bullshit arbitrary list, but it's it's somewhere in there. It's, it's phenomenal. There we go. That's neat.
Um, it would be fun to see you play a, sh a Sims game. Yeah, I wanted to check out a Sims game, and I might still do that, and not do like a big thing like Joel does, but just to check it out, because I've never really played a Sims game in any detail. I don't know which one to play. I don't know which mods to play. I don't know where to begin. I don't know how to make it a good stream. Um, I see people say, yeah, do Sims 2. Joel and I talked about it a little bit, and he recommended, like, do... I think he said do Sims 2. And, um, again, it wouldn't be, like, a big Tamadachi thing, nor would it be anywhere near, like, Meme House. But it might be fun to just see, oh, Vinny plays Sims for the first time. I had plenty of these. Well, two of them. I guess that's plenty. Plenty in terms of you don't need more than... Usually don't need more than two. Okay, you might need more than two. Make your own meme house, please. I like how we went from I may check out The Sims but not do a meme house to Vinny, make your own meme house. <laughs> God damn it. No, I'm not- I'm not gonna go hard with it if I ever play it, but I will have fun with it in my limited capacity. And, uh... I'm more of a SimCity person anyway. Well, not the more recent one, but I can't wait for City Skyline too. I'm excited for the CDI game. Me too. I'm very excited for the fake CDI game. There's a moment that sounds a little bit like Link's Awakening. It goes like da 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 da. Did I miss something? So wait now. I'm sure I've missed several things by now. Bo bo robot bro play DMC2. This is DMC2 because he shoot. He does not use sword. This sh shoot is best in game. Don't has a cool jacket and he shoot. Oh, he does use sword. No, it's DMC3. Move controller. Oh, hi, Mario Galaxy. Mario invented space. That's right. Mario also invented blumpkins. That's what you had to step on in, in Mario. The blumpkins. Listen, for real though, if you told me that a Blumpkin was a Mario enemy, and I didn't know what the word meant, I would probably believe that.
I like the like graphics on this. It looks like the um the stuff that NASA uses like on shuttles and stuff. Space material. It's a robot cow. It says I love milk. Chat, does anyone know how to open that? I keep thinking that those robot icons are Discord icons. Vinny, nobody has a PS5. Normally, I would make... I would laugh about that, but isn't it, like, up to 50 or 60 million units sold? It's like 40 million, 41 million. That's cool, but I find it interesting how 22 million of those sales are all scalpers. It's just <laughs> sitting in like storerooms and basements. And like, it's all dudes with like Yankee hats. So like, he, it's like if eight PS5s in a basement and then just a wall of Yankee hats. Fifty percent are also FIFA machines. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Well, chat, I'll be the first to say it. As a system, even though this thing takes up a lot of room, I do like the PS5. I am not overly dissatisfied with the console, and uh, I'm sure there are a lot of great games on it, like God of War, that I'm not interested in, and the Spider-Man and all that fun stuff, but my experience with it has been good in just in terms of UI and like quality of life and good controller, so I guess that's nice. <laughs> Those are nice things. He's now a PlayStation shill. Uh-oh. I've been called many things in my life. Some fair, some unfair, but I've never been called a PlayStation shill. Oh, that's how you do that. It's fun to shoot. The uh, eye toy keeps your granny entertained. <laughs> well, at least they're honest. Technically, I shill for bad movies and games more than good stuff. Technically. Because I've told people about The Room so many times, and so many of my highlights are actually bad games. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So I described the room to my wife as life-changingly bad. Yeah, well, you know whose life it changed? Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sestero, for sure. Th 
The problem I have with The Room is that it made every other bad movie worse. And not in an entertaining way. Like, I love Troll 2. I still think that Troll 2 is, is a really entertaining bad movie. And I can watch that once a year, no problem. But The Room is on a different level of entertainment. Even Neil Breen. Neil Breen might be the exception. But even... Even Neil Breen doesn't quite hit the room levels for me. There's just something that that movie does that's just on a different level. And I love Neil Breen movies. The thing I have... Okay, the problem I have with some Neil Breen movies is there are moments where it is, like, shockingly and incredibly boring. Some of his movies have better pacing than others in terms of just, like, horrendous stuff. But the room is, like, perfectly paced of... There is something that makes no sense every couple... Every couple seconds, honestly. Like, at, at least every, like, 10, 15 seconds, there's something that it makes no sense. Whether it be bad ADR, which is, like, voiceover. Um... What's this? Rezo gun. What's your opinion on Samurai Cop 2 and other movies where they try to make the room? Usually bad. I've never seen Samurai Cop 2. Like, when you cast a porn star in your movie because you're trying to recapture bad movie magic, it's just not gonna work. Like, that can only be done by someone who doesn't realize that his movie is bad. You can loop back around to, like, you're a smart filmmaker and you're making something schlocky. But in order to make a The Room or a pass-through or double-down, like a Neil Breen movie, you, I think you kind of have to be naive to what you're making. When Tommy became self-aware, his stuff became less funny. I would say, not just less funny, but horrifically unfunny. Because then he leaned into comedy, and, um... He did something called The Neighbors. And it's really, really, really painful. Like, the audio's terrible. It's just Tommy acting crazy all the time! And there's not really a whole lot of entertainment to be had, in my opinion. Maybe some of you feel differently, but I really tried. But he was trying to make, like, a wacky sitcom, like, comedy. Because people were laughing at his movie, and he was like, People have a good time, but maybe I make comedy because I am comedy master. Have you watched Fateful Findings? That's- that's- that's the one that I think is probably the best Neil Breen. That one I've seen a couple times. That- that's, uh... That's unbelievably bad. Did you see the FTC thing with Blizzard and Microsoft? Um, yeah, I- there was someone that was like, no matter what it is, buyouts are just bad for the industry. Because they lead to more exclusives and- and segmenting further. And, uh, I think I just agree with that as a blanket statement. I don't fully understand the situation, so I'm not really qualified to talk on it. And, um, I don't know- I don't know how it's going to help the industry. Even though Phil Spencer made a big tweet thread about how it will. But I know one thing from watching the VR market pulp itself into oblivion because it wasn't getting good, um... 
It was getting too segmented. Someone said, to be frank, Blizzard can't get any worse. Well, you hope that Microsoft can run it better, but, you know, if not Phil Spencer, then who's in charge next? You know, and it's still Microsoft, so I don't, I don't really know if I have any faith. Sure, it couldn't maybe get worse, but we'll see. Oh, this is the, the smaller PS2. I didn't have this. This is nice, though. I like the way this looks. Again, PS1. I still like the PS1 and its iterations the best. Just in terms of the way it looks. I also said this last time, um that I had PS1 and PS2 and uh, of the fuck of the two my favorite was PS1 it just had games I liked better PS2, I, like, I liked the games that I had. I read them off. There's all good games in there. But I think for me, it's the RPGs on the PS1 and Metal Gear Solid 1. Oh, that's another thing, too. For PS2, I have MGS2. I don't know why I didn't mention it, but it's not up. It's not on my, um, my, uh, collection. It's not up in my collection. I don't know why. It's somewhere. I don't think I sold that. And MGS3 I didn't actually own. That I played many years later on, like, Xbox. PS2 is backward compatible. Well, I'm just talking about, yes, the backwards compatibility means the PS2 wins, for sure. But if we're talking about the libraries of the games when they came out, and, like, my nostalgia and my, my opinion on which one I liked more, the PS1 was just a, an amazing time. For video games. Like, obviously the N64 had Zeldas and stuff, and, and Goldeneye and Mario, and I loved all that. But the PS1 ended up getting the sequels to some of my favorite games. Oh, I missed something. But yeah, man, the PS1 had fucking Metal Gear Solid 1, had all the Final Fantasy games. Tony Hawk 2. Bubsy. Oh, wait, no, not Bubsy. And really, it's the Final Fantasy games and, like, Chrono Cross that kind of pushed me over the edge with the PS1. Symphony of the Night, yeah. Symphony of the Night's better than anything Castlevania that came out on the PS2. This is cool. Lot of war. It's like a rainbow road, but it's quite quite different. That'll hit you right, right in that nostalgia hole right there.
Nips the rabbit looking different. Does it make noise? Vinny, which are you seeing in theaters, Barbie or Oppenheimer? I can, I can do both. I'm, a, I'm an adult. I'm seeing Oppenheimer in um, IMAX, and then I'm, I'll see Barbo movie at some point after that, I'm sure. Unless they both suck, in which case I'll just eat shit. I don't know. Would you play Pikmin instead? I'm gonna have to play Pikmin the day after it comes out. Uh-oh. Are they going to do another Astro's Playroom and then just have the PS5 be in there? Like when, when PS6 uh, comes out. Gotcha games. More gotchas. More. GPS. Oh, it's a PSP thing? Huh. It's funny to think that these things were just not a part of the devices. Now we have all of that in a phone. And like, you needed to buy a camera. Crazy. GPS was used for Metal Gear Peace Walker. Which one did I play? Yeah, I played Peace Walker, right? I liked Peace Walker quite a bit. Remember that. You could do that. Someone said there is so much noise in this game. Holy shit. It kind of is a little bit relentless, isn't it? It's like an infinitely positive atmosphere. I mean, I like it. But yeah, I agree with that.
speedrun challenges. I think there's something wrong with me, chat. I mean, uh, you know, aside from all the things that are wrong with me, but I get irrationally, like, angry when I see this series of movement from limbs, from human limbs, at this point. I, I don't know if it's because of the implication, societal implications of it, or because of the, just the way the limbs move. I don't... Have, I don't have a good reason. Maybe it's Ninja on New Year's Eve that one year. I'm not seeing enough movement. Maybe that was enough to do it for me. Maybe because when that thing first got, like, um, got into a big dance, I remember going to a diner and seeing children flossing in the middle of the aisle. And, like, you know, it didn't, like, annoy me or anything. I had nothing to do with me. But I just remember seeing it and thinking to myself, why are they having fun? I don't like fun. I had fun one time, and I stopped that years ago. Oh, that's the speedrun area. Wait, chat, what, what's the, um, what's the boss? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying enough attention. I mean, I saw the, the thing. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I guess I just... Yeah. The year is 1994. Nintendo committed the ultimate act of disrespect against Sony and partnered with Philips so they could create Excuse me, pro oh, wait, wait, great, I'll grab my stuff! Which is timely, considering what was announced today. Okay, that was earlier than this. Ken. Kenergy. Ryan Gosling's brain is fucking broken, by the way. I think that, that role really screwed him up. Like, he keeps talking about how scientists don't understand what Kenergy is. And it's like a burrito that hasn't been microwaved properly or something. Like, the dude is off the fucking rails. I would say I'm worried about him, but... I mean, at least he seems like he's having a good time. Literally just advertising. Wait. I thought he was a relatable friend. Doesn't drop the bit until the Blu-ray commentary. No, but for real, though, Ryan Gosling is really good when it comes to comedy. I, I like him in The Nice Guys quite a bit. Oh my god. I remember seeing this tech demo in videos about the PS1. I like the, the jitter and the low poly.
when I see this dinosaur, my mind goes to the Parasite Eve fight. Maybe because I just played it. It's not over yet, Snake. Guaranteed. I need to lower this. Grab the tongue! Grab it! Man, the amount of times I've had to pull a tongue in a video game. <sighs> Maybe like a couple times? Well, it's not the most, like, lengthy experience, but, again, for a pack-in game, and for, like, a, a little demo, and... I thought it said Miyamoto. I was like, what is Miyamoto doing, doing here? Um, for a pack-in game, it's great. And for PlayStation nostalgia, it's great. It, it really is phenomenal. Like, the type of game that this is, I wasn't expecting, like, to even get two streams out of it. It's just a really quality experience. I could see Astro coming back to the PS5 in like a bigger adventure. Like I said, Nintendo Land was also pretty cool. But for everything it did, those things just never came back. It was like, here's all the things the system can do, and here's maybe the first and last time you might see them.
that said, though, I'm sure the, uh, the gimmick of the fucking adaptive triggers or whatever, um, isn't used, like, a whole lot, aside from, yeah, you, it, you can make guns feel cool. That's fine. I'm just happy the controller feels good. Like, I don't need too much stuff. Gyro aim, great. You got solid controls, you got a solid controller that works and doesn't break upon playing it for the first time, even better. I fucking- I broke two PS4 controllers and I, I don't know how. One just broke. <laughs> like, it just broke, and then the other one I dropped it maybe three feet. One time. And then the fucking thing just stopped working forever. So I don't- I don't know, man. I'm still- I'm still salty about that controller. I mention it. I mention it more than I should. But yeah, um, it was nice. I guess we're done with the PS5 now. We got the PS5's credits. And... Well... It's over. This will be my Final Fantasy machine. Th th when you think about it though, chat, this is Final Fantasy machine part two. Um, Final Fantasy machine part one was PS1. <laughs> The Castlevania reference you missed. I'm sure it's fun. I'm sure it's a knife, not a knife reference. Pulse 3 wireless headset. Is this now advertising new product? The, literally the easiest platforming thing I had to do all game and I, I screwed it up. I'm guessing this is going to be all PS5 stuff. I'm sure... I'm sure, um... This game sold a lot of product. It is, like, kind of weird, isn't it? Like, they kind of had a thing going for, for years. Low battery alien controller. Yeah. They kind of had a thing going, and then this one, they're just like, nah, it's different. It's the same, but it looks a little different. How does it feel different than PS4? Um. Let's see. Yeah, the PS4 one reminds me more of the DualShock. It's, uh, handles. The grips are a little bit more rounded. Um, other than that, mostly just aesthetic choices. They feel very, very, very similar. Like, down to the uh, dog nose-esque texture on the thumb pads. Um, yeah, mostly aesthetic, aside from, like, the adaptive triggers and maybe... I don't know, it feels a little... bulkier to hold slightly, but 
Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's hard to explain. They look different. That's clear. Do you remember the E3 presentation of the PS3 controller? It was a silver boomerang. Oh, yeah. Mine is laying horizontal. So it's like this. It comes with a, a little piece that you add to it. it. It doesn't look great. I gotta be honest. It does not look that great horizontal. Honestly, I kind of think this console is a little ugly. Uh, maybe some of you would disagree. I, I think it's kind of ugly. I don't I don't really like the design of it. It's, I mean, it's fine. It's not like the worst looking console I've ever seen. But, uh... I don't know. I don't really know what the, the controller I love. The controller looks awesome. The console itself, I'm not crazy about. But yeah, that boomerang controller was pretty embarrassing. I remember that becoming like a meme. And it looked like really painfully un uncomfortable. But that's when they were like, hey, we're going to do DualShock again. Let's take a look at the controllers. Let's, let's look. Oh, uh, I don't have the controller for the PS4. I don't have that unlocked, but PS1. Then there is the DualShock, which is just PS1 with the analog. And then DualShock 2 is very, very similar. With some other little tech in there, too. But then you have that PS3 is just, I mean, they were like, all right, boomerang didn't work. What do we got? What do we got? We've got the old one. All right, do the old one. Do it. And now looking at the PS4 one, it is a little bit more like I have it in my hand right now. And yeah, there's, there's like a, a sleeker thing going on here. Like it's, it's more uh, sensual, especially where the... L and R buttons jut out. This uh, this has a little bit more um, sensuality to it, <laughs> and the 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 handles, the grips are less. They're more like pointed in the DualShock two and three, and these feel a little bit more round. Yeah, kind of hard to explain, but anyway, I. I I think this is their best controller yet, this new one. Someone said, I would agree if my PS5 controller hadn't gotten stick drift. Well, that's what happened to me with the PS4 one. One of them got really bad stick drifts. And then the other one got really bad stick drifts. had that. Okay, so obviously I didn't get all the collectibles, but... I think I'm good. I enjoyed my time with this game. Got two full streams at it. Well, not exactly a full stream, but um, I enjoyed it.
this does get you excited for the potential of the PS5. I leave the question to you. Leave a comment. It's been three years since this console has released almost. Has it lived up to that potential so far? Has it been worth the $500 for you, the chat member? I can't answer this question because I just got it and I'm only using it as a Final Fantasy machine for now until maybe another later date. So, leave a comment. Let me know. Also, specifically leave a comment if you don't go for uh, go to war for Sony on message boards on the internet. Because I know the answer is going to be automatically yes. Like, okay, listen, as a Nintendo fan, I just will tell you, the Wii U were dark days. Even the Wii, towards the end of it, there were some dark days. Some great games for both systems, but I remember the dark times. And it's okay, it's okay to have, you know, criticisms of your favorite company. So, I'll tell you that I've enjoyed my time with this game, but I'm curious, let me know what you think, and I'm not going to be able to read the chat. I'll read the comments at a later date. I'm just genuinely curious what you think of the PS5 so far, almost three years in, and, um, you know... I like the Nintendo Switch. I have some issues with it. I have issues with Nintendo as a company. Do you feel the same for Sony? But, one thing's for sure, and I'll agree with this, as people have recommended this game and have said this, this was probably one of the best, if not the best, pack-in game I've ever played. So, bonus points for that. And, um, I don't regret buying the console yet. So, yeah, more Final Fantasy soon. And at the very least, I'll be able to play Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2 on day one. And, uh, I'll see what else is out for this thing. And maybe you'll see more of it. I'm gonna go early. What time is it? It's not that early, but I'm gonna get going for now. I'll probably be live. I'm gonna try to be live tomorrow night for um, Final Fantasy, if you want to stop by and watch some of that. It'll be like a full four hours of Final Fantasy if you want. And then also Zelda. I don't know what day that'll be. Maybe Friday, maybe Saturday, maybe not. Maybe early next week. Um, this week's been real busy for me. But we'll complete Zelda soon. Alright, thank you everybody for watching tonight. This was fun. Um, thank you everyone that's still here that was at my Mario Kart stream. Whether it be the streamers I was playing with or the chat members, I appreciate you stopping by. This was a lot of fun. And um, by the way, if anyone has any more um, dreams recommendations, I want to check out some new dreams on the PS5 and see what they look like with increased frame rates and such. So, that might be fun. All right, I'm done now. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for everything. Vinny, I learned how to count in the Mario Kart stream. Thank you. You're welcome.